Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all to join in the celebration of the funeral mass for our dear beloved Billy Fury. We gather around the altar of the Eucharist, each one of you welcome, a place at the altar for each of us to be nurtured with the living bread 
come down from heaven. We honour Billy with Christian burial. We accompany his soul on his journey to the house of the Father. We pray for his bereaved family and ask God to bring each one comfort and consolation. We reflect that this will be our story one day also. We are pilgrim people journeying to the house of God, but that there is a powerful message of hope and healing and comfort. So as we enter the presence of God, we remember that one day we will all meet again in the fullness of peace and that God is close to us at this moment. Lord Jesus, you are our life and our resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the hope of the believer. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life, so as to open up an earthly entry into eternity. We humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant, Billy, to be inscribed in the book of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We now sit and we will listen to the Holy Scriptures. So our first reading will be read by Paddy. Our psalm will be sung and Dermot will lead us in our second reading. <clears throat> a reading from the book of Revelation 14, 13. I heard a great voice from heaven say to me, write down, Happy are those who die in the Lord. Happy indeed, the Spirit says. Now they can rest for their work, since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. You shall cross the barren desert but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I Blessed are your poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked men insult and hate you, Blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, my life is already being poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to depart. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come for me now is the crown of uprightness which the Lord, the upright judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the gospel. Praise to you. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. So I welcome you all to this beautiful place of prayer to journey with Billy on his journey to the house of the Father. It was always this lovely tradition, you know, people came to visit. And I was just thinking I was leaving from the house there, walking down that short distance, and the people you would meet on the road, and if you knew them, you'd stand, of course, and have the little chat. So I often think of the journey, and this is what we're doing for Billy. We're journeying with him as far as we can, humanly, to the house of the Father, leaving him home, so to speak, and thanking God for the beautiful gift of his life. So I welcome you all. I'm a visitor here myself. Simon is my name, parish priest in a place called Granard in County Longford, lifelong friend of the Fury family through various events that took place. So it's a privilege to be here with Father Dennis to celebrate Billy's funeral mass. <clears throat> we gather to celebrate a life that was beautifully lived and, in fact, lived to the full. The scriptures today surely speaks the message for us. I have kept the faith. I ran the race to the finish. I enjoyed every day of my life, and I thank God for it. That's indeed what Pope Francis continually tells us. Make the most of every day. Enjoy every day. Go out and buy 
maybe a jacket every now and again or a new pair of shoes and live them and live your life and live it to the full because there's only one of you in this world you are a necessary person you are the beloved of the heavenly father loved and cherished so today we are journeying with billy into the house of god there are three strands to every funeral that we gather to celebrate the first one is to pray and indeed offer the greatest prayer we have the holy eucharist for the repose of the soul of the person that has gone so thank you for your prayerful presence here today and that is why we're here gathered around the altar of eucharist praying billy's soul into heaven and thanking god for the gift of his life recently i was just watching the funeral mass of pope benedict and it was an ordinary funeral mass like the funeral mass of every christian but there was a lovely prayer of intercession that said was said at it and it was a, an appeal to our lady that she would intercede that the person and today Billy will see the face of Jesus. And that is what we're asking our lady that Billy will see the face of Jesus. And the next prayer was and that each person would be comforted on their pilgrim way. And that is our prayer that each one will be comforted on their pilgrim way. And we think of today's lovely scriptures bringing us comfort and strength in the every year now there's a special day called grandparents day and the grandchildren celebrate the joy of their grandparents and they remember the huge influence they've had on their lives and indeed on the lives of their own children St. Luke tells us a little bit about our Blessed Lady. He says she treasured these things in her heart. And we have treasured Billy in our hearts, you as his children and his grandchildren and his family. You have treasured him in your hearts and he is indeed has been your treasure. And we think of when we lose these treasures, how we can be bereaved and we think of the power of God bringing us new strength and we thank God for this great treasure that had such an impact on our hearts in so many different ways. So we thank God for Billy's life. He was born in County Galway. He met his beautiful wife Maeve who was a Donegal girl, a primary teacher and put, put down roots after, like the road to Amos journey today, landed here in this beautiful place, a place where people would pay dearly to come on holidays, but a place where you grew up, a place where you loved. And there they lived their lives and made a great impression, Maeve as a local teacher, and Billy here as a great support and friend and neighbor and nurturing his family. So we extend our very deepest sympathy to Billy's family, to Orla, Dermot, David, and Patrick, and his daughters-in-law, Celine and Johanna, and I think uh, very especially of that other treasure that went back to the house of God, Myra, a few years ago. And we think of the treasures that we have lost, but are now with us, close to us. We extend to you, Nick, our deepest sympathy also. Twelve beautiful grandchildren here today, each of you with your own special memory of a lovely grandfather who loved you, who nurtured you, who helped you grow to be what you are. I do often say, at every wedding, roots and wings, the lovely roots you have received from all your grandparents. And now, the same when you stand on the shoulder of the giant, you have to see that bit farther. So I invite you to have far-seeing eyes to see the beauty and the blessings of God. 
And then the third part, we come back here to ourselves to know that this will be our story too. We're pilgrim people. And that one day we will share the glory of eternal life in the house of the Heavenly Father. And we pray that during this Lenten season, we will remember that divine spark that's in every human being that not even death will extinguish and that we will take care of that. See, there is that sacred space in each of our lives that belongs to God. That's what makes each person unique and beautiful. And Lent, of course, and the day of a funeral is a space that we will remember that we will nurture that place, that we will take care of it. It's precious and that we will do something good each day, that we'll hold the treasure of Billy in our hearts forever, remembering his joy and his goodness, his fun, his laughter, indeed a joyful messenger, a witness of gospel joy. And we pray that we'll remember that we will share that glory of eternal life. So on behalf of our community today, we are close to all of you in prayer, especially Billy's family. We pray in thanksgiving for a life well lived. And the scriptures again says it beautifully. Billy, you fought the good fight. You kept the faith. You ran the race to the very finish. But like the journey of Amos, you had great people with you. You had great people walking with you, great neighbours, great friends that help you on that journey when it was a little bit challenging. And now the, you recognize Jesus forever in the fullness of peace. May we walk humbly each day into the presence of God. Amen. So we now stand and we will pray for our Billy and we invite David Fury, I invite Helen and Ronan and Katie and Kiva and Molly to lead us now in prayers for Billy. So the gift of prayer calms the soul, it brings peace and hope, and we will assuredly be praying in the days to come for all Billy's family. So we remember the lovely prayer that we often say to Our Lady, Pray for us that we will be worthy of the promises of Christ. The promises of Christ are indeed powerful. I am with you. Do not be afraid. I have that place ready for each one of you. We pray for peace in the midst of violence and tragedy in this world. May we have the patience to be understanding, the strength to be forgiving, and the grace to admit when we are wrong. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who look after the sick in hospital or other places of care, especially Billy's carer, Christine, Dr. Emer Shorthall, and all at Strand Medical Practice, the staff at Stax Pharmacy in Bettystown, and all the staff at the Lord's Hospital. Bless and reward them for their service and dedication through their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you. We pray for all the friends and neighbours who brought Billy so much happiness. May everybody be blessed with such friendships. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who could not make it here today, especially Billy's siblings, Mary, Pat, and Declan, and those joining us from across the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are suffering because of serious illness or old age at this time, and for all those who are in hospital. May they never lose hope in the promise of new life with you one day in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those we have loved who have died. In particular, we remember our Granny Maeve, Maura, Joe and Dennis, John and Rosemary, and Angus. 
Billy joins them in our thoughts and prayers today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And each one of you have your own memory of Billy, his friendship and his goodness. Just a little quiet prayer in your own hearts now for your own intentions that you carry, someone you would like to pray for, and today very specially for Billy. Happy are those who die in the Lord, they will rest forever. I ran the race to the finish, I kept the faith, the crown of glory is waiting for me. The disciples on the road to Amos, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? And they poured out their hearts to Jesus and they were going the wrong direction, so he brought them back. And they recognized him at the breaking of the bread. We now gather at the altar of Eucharist for the breaking of the bread. May we too recognize Jesus, who is our strength and our hope. And we pray, may you support us all the day long, till the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then in your mercy, may you give us all the great joy of the fullness of life. Amen. So now we will sit and we will have our after procession and invite Orla and Grace and Lillian to carry the gifts of bread and wine for the celebration of our Mass. Friends, we now pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord God, whose Son left us in this sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Billy, we come to the eternal table of Christ, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And raise them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty. It is our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. 
that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for all of us in heaven. Now with the angels and with the saints, with the thrones and dominions, with the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <coughs> Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, the mystery of faith. <clears throat> Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as 
we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we all may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Billy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand and we pray at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teachings. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Always at this time of our Mass, we would have shared the peace. But Jesus stands in our midst as he stood with the disciples on the road to Amos. He said, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? What's the story in your heart at this moment? And I know the story, there's sadness, there's loss, there's pain. The disciples recognized Jesus at the breaking of the bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Be 
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We are reminded every time we stand in the face of death that there is a divine spark in every one of us that not even death can extinguish. There is that sacred space in every human being that belongs to God. And it's only God can fill that place. It's sacred. It's who we are. And that is the great gift that will go back to God. So not to neglect that sacred space and that divine spark. Indeed, it was so evident in Billy's life. Joyful man, filled with enthusiasm, filled with great blessings, great love of people, the heart of community, loved his friends and they in turn loved him. So we thank God for that divine spark that not even death will extinguish. May we nurture it every day through kindness and prayer and living the joy of the gospel. We now have our communion reflection being read now. And <clears throat> Thanks very much. Afterglow. I'd like the memory of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when life is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun of happy memories that I leave when my life is done. Thank you very much for that beautiful reflection. And it surely was, that's what Billy is doing, he's leaving a lot of very happy memories, just thinking of all the lovely photographs that we looked at in the home the other evening, each of them telling a wonderful story of a special event or a moment in his life. And we assure you of our prayers and the continued prayers, Billy is in the fullness of life, with all he has loved and journeying now to the house of God. And thank you to each one of you for your beautiful gift of your prayer and your presence. May your lives be blessed and may you remember that divine spark that's in you 
that not even death will extinguish. And say thanks again to Johanna and John for the most beautiful singing today and lifting our hearts in prayer. Thanks to Father Dennis, who I know a lifetime, for making me welcome and for both of us celebrating Billy's funeral mass here today. And again, we extend our very deepest sympathy to all Billy's family and all of you that are mourning to stay that has lost this great treasure. <clears throat> and we pray that the prayer of our Blessed Lady will smile gently on you this day and bring you great comfort. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let us now stand and pray. <clears throat> Lord God, whose Son has left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Billy may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you and your families and the work that you do, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Before we go our separate ways, let us now take leave of our brother Billy. May our farewell express our deep affection for him. May it ease our sadness, strengthen our hope. One day we will joyfully greet Billy again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Now we remember in a silent prayer the great gift of Billy's life and the sprinkling with the holy water he became a child of God in the waters of baptism that the vine spark was nurtured and we thank God for him today and also the incense our prayers rising before the throne of God. Saints of God, come to his aid, <coughs> hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. <coughs> Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, 
we commend our brother Billy in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon Billy in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to Billy, and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother Billy forever. In peace we will take Billy to his place of rest. When hope beside the vigil key, the west is sleep. The West is asleep, alas, and well may Aaron weep when Connacht lies in slumber deep. Their lake and plain smile fair and free, mid rocks the guardian chivalry sing. from crashing wind and lashing sea that chainless wave and lovely land freedom and nationhood demand be sure the great God never planned for slumbering slaves a home so grand and long a brave and haughty race honored and sentinel the place sing ho not in the sun's disgrace can quite destroy their glory's trace for often in O'Connor's van to triumph dashed each Connacht clan and fleet as dear the Normans ran through Corsleave Pass and Ardrahan and later times saw deeds as brave and glory God can record's grave. Sing ho, they died their land to save at Akram slopes and Shannon's wave. And if when all a vigil keep, the West's asleep, the West's asleep, alas, and well may Aaron weep, that Connacht lies in slumber deep, but hark a voice like the Sing ho, hurrah, let England quake. We'll watch till death for ever.